With the introduction of Muzan in the seventh episode of the first season, the Demon Slayer progenitor seemed invincible. However, as the series progressed and the will of Yorichi acting through Tanjiro pierced through the upper moons, the fog between Muzan and the Slayers faded away, with the Slayers finally cornering the demon in his castle. The news of Genya and Murichido's demise spreads across the castle, making everyone even more determined to kill Muzan. So that the sacrifices of the other demon slayers aren't washed away in vain, the slayers corner Muzan's cocoon, but Kiria warns them and orders everyone to fall back. Muzan jumps out of hibernation, sprouting demon-like fangs from every part of his body. Muzan, having seemingly dissolved the toxin of Lady Tamayo, talks to her with her head held in his hands. He slaughters and eats the slayers surrounding him, while crushing Tamayo's head with his bare hands. Meanwhile, Yushiro falls to his knees as he senses the absence of Lady Tamayo, while Muzan continues on with his slaughter to recover his stamina after spending all of his energy dissolving the toxin. Kiria goes into a state of shock as he realizes that he led all the slayers to their deaths in the middle of the castle. He starts questioning his capabilities while reiterating the fact that he isn't as mindful as his father. Suddenly, Kiria's sister slaps him back to reality, motivating him to keep the fight going. He orders all the pillars through the Kasugai Crows to gather at a single point. However, Mitsuri and Obanai, on their way to the center, encounter the new Upper Moon 4, Nakime. Meanwhile, Giyu and Tanjiro successfully reach the specified location and encounter Muzan in his new form. A fiery wave of rage fills Tanjiro's body, but Giyu immediately advises him to calm down. Tanjiro recollects the images of his family's slaughter, while Muzan berates him for not going on with their lives after surviving a calamity such as himself. This angers Tanjiro even more, as he declares that a being like Muzan shouldn't be allowed to exist on the face of the planet. Tanjiro centers his thoughts and decides to drag Muzan into the sun, as it's the only way to defeat him. Tanjiro takes a fighting stance, and Muzan unleashes his flesh whips, written with fangs, towards Giyu and Tanjiro. The duo immediately realizes that Muzan's whips are as sharp as swords, and have the capability of expanding at unsurmountable speeds. Tanjiro dodges the whips and goes in for the kill. However, at the very last second, he gets hit by one of Muzan's whips and loses an eye in the process. As Muzan moves forward to kill Tanjiro, Giyu grabs him and carries him to safety. Muzan asks Giyu if they plan to defeat him with the strength of only three Hashiras, while revealing that Obanai and Mitsuri have been decimated by Nakime. Muzan continues his assault. However, as more whips move closer to the duo, the roof above Muzan breaks, and Mitsuri and Obanai enter the hall in order to save Tanjiro. It's revealed that Yushiro, with his powers, hijacked Nakime's brain and is in the process of turning her mind into mush. Mitsuri, in a flashback, recalls how Yushiro approached her before they faced Nakime and laid out his plan to use Mitsuri as a decoy and then find an opportunity to attack Nakime from a blind spot. After this, he sent conflicting information to Muzan through Nakime's brain, stating that the Hashiras are dead while Mitsuri gathered them up for one final strike. Muzan realizes that the person behind Nakime's paralysis is none other than Lady Tamayo's demon Yushiro, and he focuses his mental strength to take back control of Nakime and thus the Infinity Castle. While Yushiro engages Muzan in a mental tussle, Giyu and Tanjiro simultaneously attack Muzan in order to prevent him from taking back control. The castle doors start going haywire, and that's when Muzan decides to kill Nakime himself. Nakime's brain implodes, and the castle starts crumbling. Obanai realizes that everyone inside the castle would die if they didn't escape. However, in a sudden turn of events, Yushiro, with all his might, pushes the Infinity Castle up to the surface. Tanjiro wakes up and finds that he and the others have been transported to the surface. Meanwhile, Kiria is disappointed as their estimated location of the castle was much farther off than expected. He asks his sister how long it'll take for the sun to rise, and with a grim voice, she answers that there's still an hour and a half left. The Kasugai Crow announces the time till dawn. However, Muzan bursts out of the pile of rubble with explosive power. Obanai, Giyu, and Mitsuri simultaneously attack and cut Muzan. 
However, their cuts seemingly have no effect on him. As he begins to heal the wounds perpetually as the blades strike him, Muzan once again rains his flesh whips like a volley of blades on the three Hashiras. However, the lower skilled slayers protect them with their own bodies, acting as a human meat shield. Everyone gets scattered all around Muzan. But suddenly, the three Hashiras notice that Tanjiro's wounds have spread across his face. Muzan reveals that the little thorn will soon be dead as he's been infected with a fatal dose of his blood. Meanwhile, at the mansion, Nezuko wakes up from her sleep, but the medicine given to her by Tamiyo in order to convert her back to a demon appears to be malfunctioning. Rokudaki rushes to catch Nezuko, but she gives him the slip by jumping off of a cliff. Kiriya feels the hand of Kaguya on his shoulder and calls off Nezuko's pursuit. Meanwhile, the three Hashiras battle Muzan in a highly decisive yet overwhelming battle, while the latter starts gaining the upper hand with every passing second. As Muzan increases the speed of his attacks, Mitsuri's defense falters. However, as the whip is about to hit her, Gyomei enters the battle along with Sanemi and blocks it. Sanemi then proceeds to throw bottles of spirit at Muzan, which burn the Demon King. Murata, who's alive during this snuffle, tries to sneak in and attack on Muzan. However, Giyu spots him and orders him to save Tanjiro instead. Suddenly, Tanjiro finds himself transported back into the memories of his ancestor Sumiyoshi. And as Tanjiro observes Sumiyoshi cutting wood, he sees Yorichi, the progenitor of the breaths, approaching him with a majestic face, yet a terrible frown. Meanwhile, in the real world, Murata is pulled by his colleague to help free Yushiro, as he's the only one who can help Tanjiro recover. In the dream, Sumiyoshi and Yorichi sit down, and the latter explains that he came to visit the couple as they crossed his mind frequently. Yorichi reveals the details of his childhood and how he ran away from his parental home after his mother's death. He ran quite far and met a girl named Uta, to whom he got married years later. While Uta became pregnant with their first child, Yorichi set out to find a midwife to help with the birth. However, as he returned home unsuccessfully, he found his wife and unborn child murdered in cold blood by a demon. A swordsman soon approached the grieving Yorichi and insisted on giving the dead an honorable burial. Yorichi went on to join the Demon Slayer Corps, and in his quest to slay demons, he finally came across the Demon King himself. Yorichi approached Muzan and his accomplice, and the scene erupted into a battle. Noticing the seven hearts and five brains of Muzan while dodging his whips, Yorichi unleashed multiple strikes on Muzan, cutting his body to pieces, sparing only Muzan's arm, which held his decapitated head due to not being able to heal. Suddenly, Muzan ground his teeth like a fiend while his body exploded into 1,800 pieces. Yorichi, with his wits, was able to cut down about 1,500 of them However, some of them escaped, and thus Muzan was again left alive. As this occurred, Yorichi's allies rushed towards him, informing him about his brother's betrayal. The pillars blamed Yorichi for the conversion of his brother and the subsequent killing of the leader by him. Yorichi then takes Sumire in his hand and raises her above him, as if to play with her. But the innocent smile on the child's face brings tears down Yorichi's face as he hugs her tightly. Tsuyako arrives at the scene and consoles Yorichi, stating that everything will turn out okay. Tanjiro and Sumiyoshi's body prays for the well-being of Yorichi, knowing well that the man has been dead for centuries. Meanwhile, in the present, the Hashiras battle against an overwhelmingly powerful Muzan, whose strength seems to be rising with every passing second. All the Slayers start encountering problems dodging Muzan's attacks, and between all this, Mitsuri suffers a fatal wound. Obanai rushes towards Mitsuri and orders the Kakushi to find Yushiro in order to give first aid to Mitsuri. Obanai rejoins the battle, leaving Mitsuri in the care of the Kakushi and successfully detaches several of Muzan's whips, which hinder his healing. As Obanai rethinks his strategy, Giyu gets hit by another of Muzan's whips, which deeply injures his hands, infecting them in the process. His sword flies off in his hands, however, the other Hashiras come to his rescue and defend his position so he can rearm himself. 
but this results in them getting infected with Muzan's blood as well. As the battle rages on, Chachamaru, the pet of Tamiyo, appears above Muzan and shoots out some kind of medicine from his pouch, which temporarily reduces the infection suffered by the Slayers. The medicine is revealed to be another one of Tamayo's curses on Muzan, which enrages him even more as he shoots out massive strikes from his whips, engulfing a large area. Obanai remembers reminiscing about Tokido and how his blade turned red on the brink of death. As he observes his fellow slayers fighting to the death with their blades, Obanai's blade changes color to a deep scarlet red. The turning of Obanai's blade stops him at a certain place as his breathing deteriorates. Muzan spots this opening and attacks Obanai, landing a direct hit on him. Giyu reaches the spot, however, he gets highly upset due to his inability to save Obanai in time. Suddenly, one of Muzan's tentacles falls off, and he notices Obanai jumping high into the air. Muzan is perplexed as another tentacle falls off and he realizes that some other slayers have also arrived to fight him while hiding behind Tamayo's cowardly transparency technique. Muzan whips all his tentacles at once to reveal that Zenitsu, Inosuke, and Kanao have reached the final battle. Sanemi realizes that a red blade will stop the regenerative capabilities of Muzan and shouts the information aloud. Yome decides to turn his weapon red hot by striking both ends of his weapon against each other. Sanemi and Giyu too apply this strategy to strike swords and then turn them red with pressure and force. Murata, while healing Tanjiro, shouts at the top of his lungs, praying for Tanjiro to come back to life, while his pulse slowly starts increasing. Suddenly, Tanjiro grips his sword with immense force, while the other slayers try to cut down Muzan. Yomei once again focuses and tries to access the see-through world, while he successfully does. He motivates Obanai to do the same, and he ends up seeing a glimpse of Muzan's inner body structure as well. However, soon, Muzan once again erupts into a frenzy, and the battlefield becomes awfully quiet. Subsequently, we see Gyome with a severed leg smashed into a wall, as well as the other core members swirling to walls, unconscious from the impact. With only Kanao left to defend the cause, Muzan soon diverts his attention towards her. But as soon as he could kill her, Tanjiro severs Muzan's arm with his scarlet blade and rescues Kanao. Tanjiro, with Sumiyoshi's memories of Yorichi flushed into his brain, decodes that the 13th form of sun breathing could most probably be produced by repeating all the 12 forms simultaneously, a feat that has been achieved only by Yorichi and Tanjiro, his father. He decides to go along with the strategy, as this is his only hope. He rushes towards Muzan, who once again gets shocked due to the Yorichi's fearful memory influx. Tanjiro realizes that this strategy is working and that all the 12 forms are extensions of each other, which upon combining, will turn into the 13th form. With only one hour left until dawn, Tanjiro is able to simultaneously combine the six forms, but this takes an immense toll on his body up to the point that his arms feel like they're being ripped off of his body. Suddenly, Muzan realizes that his senses and attacks have dulled, which is odd considering the fact that he's facing a single opponent. He goes on to investigate the remaining cells of Tamayo in his body. However, Tamayo refuses to tell Muzan a thing as she gets dissolved to bits. Muzan then dives into Tamayo's memories and finds out that the medicine she gave him has aged him rapidly and that he is 9,000 years older at the moment. Tanjiro continues his assault and successfully connects all 12 forms, as he decides to keep spamming them on the demon till dawn. Tanjiro carries on his attacks, however he once again starts faltering due to fatigue. He lets his guard down during the next attack, and Muzan spots it immediately as he fires his tentacles towards him. Tanjiro helplessly sees the tentacles approach him, but as soon as they're about to hit him, Obanai appears and saves him, losing his eye in the process. Obanai drops Tanjiro and continues his attack, using Kabamaru, his snake, to describe the situation to him. Muzan starts to weaken even further, and suddenly, his scars from 500 years ago inflicted by Yorichi open up, which had been continuously burning him for five centuries. 
Muzan curses Yorichi, claiming that he was the real monster to have inflicted such devastating wounds on him, as they've continuously burned him for over five centuries now. With only 40 minutes left until dawn, and no sign of either Tanjiro or the Slayers giving up, Muzan decides to ride the wind and escape with his life. However, Tanjiro pursues him and throws the swords of the fallen Slayers at him. As he dodges the sword attacks from Tanjiro, Obanai jumps over Muzan and impales him right in the nape with his red sword. Tanjiro follows with an attack of his own and slashes Muzan's back. Tanjiro goes on to throw Yushiro's talismans towards Obanai. However, both of them get hit by Muzan's whips once again. The talismans float around in the air, and Kabamaru grabs two of them in the nick of time. As the battle progresses, Nezuko is seen approaching the battlefield, having been partially turned into a human. With 35 minutes left until dawn, Muzan realizes that the Slayer Corps is kneaded together like prayer beads and will fight till the end of eternity to slay him. Muzan tries to split his body like he did during the battle with Yorichi. However, the medicine injected by Tamayo stops him. Tamayo's assimilation with Muzan's cells reveals that the toxin she blended together had four uses. To age him rapidly, revert him back to a human, prevent him from splitting, and destroy his cells as they weaken. Driven into a corner like a bleeding wild animal, Muzan lets out the strongest shockwave of energy yet, opening a huge mouth on his chest that reaches to the Ubuyashiki mansion as well. With only 25 minutes left until dawn, Kiria motivates the Slayers to move forward and stop thinking about him. Inosuke, with his wounds relatively patched up, stands up to challenge Muzan once again demanding that he give back all of the lives he took, or he'll just snatch his and return. Zenitsu arrives at the battlefield as well, while asking Tanjiro to just stay alive while they deal with Muzan. Tanjiro, not sure what to do next as his nerves are damaged by Muzan's blood, decides to stab himself and drain the infected parts out while steering clear of major nerves and arteries. Meanwhile, with only a few breaths remaining, Giyu and Gyome get on their feet. Zenitsu unleashes his seventh form. However, due to his blade not turning red, the wound inflicted is not that deep. Inosuke tries his best to hold off Muzan after Zenitsu's attack, but gets hit with multiple strikes that break his sword and connect with his body. Tanjiro, having drained all the infected blood, gets up and attacks Muzan, driving him into a corner and impaling him right in the chest. However, as the sun rises, Muzan converts his head into a giant mouth to eat Tanjiro, but Obanai protects him with his own body while Sanemi and Mitsuri join in on the assault as well. Giyu too joins the assault as he provides extra support to Tanjiro's strike by holding down his sword. But as soon as the first rays of sun hit Muzan, he begins to grow into a huge monster-like creature, covering himself up with his own flesh. He turns into a giant monster infant and tries to crawl to safety. However, the Kakushi begin to slam buses onto the creature, slowing it down. The monster baby tries to crawl over the bus, but Ginya appears and cuts off his arm while cursing him to burn to death already. Gyome too puts his chain around the monster's neck and topples him over. With nowhere to run, Muzan tries to dig his way through, but once again gets cut down by Giyu for the last time. The sun's rays hit Muzan directly, and he burns off completely in the sun, while an injured Tanjiro dives into a weird comatose state. This marks the end of Muzan's tussle with the Slayers, but this is not the end for Tanjiro.